are you from? So I'm from Naperville, Illinois. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, Chicago land suburb, pretty well off. About, but the population when it comes to like looking like black people, it's very minimal. <laughs> it's majority white, majority, you know, Asian descended type people. So like when you when you're coming across another black person, it's like, oh, brotherhood, stick together, right? It's a bubble. Like I don't think people have an understanding of like what it is in like the south side of Chicago. They have like what the media tells them, but like they don't they don't go to these neighborhoods to actually see like what's going on there. I Me mean, for myself, I do have family on the west and south sides, and I and I know they're not all bad people. They just they just need that opportunity to like push them forward, and they just don't know where to go. Yeah. So man, so so from Naperville, man, you was out there in Naperville. You said it was like a bubble, huh? It's definitely a bubble. Yeah. <laughs> The fine bubble, like, what do you mean? Like, you mean bubble as in, like, man, the black people saying that their bubble, like, they so, like, out. like, what do you mean? So, when it comes to like the politics of how these people vote and like how they see the world, I'm not talking about the black people. Some of them, some of the black people might be like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> but like, some of the white, some of the, you no, know, our fair skinned brothers and sisters are just like, oh, they should just work hard and things will come their way. I'm just like, I, I love the world that you live in where hard work solves the answers. I think a lot of people miss out. Like sometimes it, it's a little luck and sometimes there's a, there's that grace of like having connections that a lot of people don't have. Like your uncle works for a fortune 500 company. That's a manager in some sector that can hire you on for an internship or get you a job there. Like a lot of people don't have that. They don't have, or maybe they're a small business owner. Like how many people did you know? Are like a small business owner that are willing to take you on board or like pass that off to you. Yeah. Not a lot. In my, in my case, not a lot of people. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but I would love to see for that start to shift. Um, yeah. I would love to see for people to like get into these fields and then decide like, where do you want to go to from there? Do you want to go be a manager of Fortune 500 or maybe this is where you launch your consulting business? I would love my people. I would love people to, you know, actually have that experience rather than just like oh woe is me this is i'm stuck in a dead-end job for 40 years because that's just how things are supposed to be yeah man ain't that the truth so for you man you said you was in this bubble out in naperville and then i'm you went to, you went to high school in naperville so yeah i went to high school in naperville um then then done, then done just like everybody else in naperville i even went to the school that i went to college and my school was a, this college i went to was a popular destination for my students. Well, the students for that graduated from my high school. So it's like I went from one bubble to another bubble <laughs> because I was running into people. I'm like, hey, I just saw you six months ago. <laughs> and, uh, we were just graduating high school. So being in Columbia, Missouri, because I went to the University of Missouri, that was another bubble. And I don't I don't know how where people are of like four or five years ago, but Mizzou was in some very racial <laughs> racially charged events we had the football team not wanting to play we had student body presidents that felt insulted it was it was a very interesting clash of like race relations there and yeah. to be a part of that i was just like i kind of just came to school to be a math major maybe have a little fun <laughs> maybe party somewhere but no i'm in the middle of like tense racial relations going on in here so people are looking at me when they come home, like, what's going over at Mizzou? And I'm just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, the first time, like, like outside of Naperville, is that just first time kind of like in a different bubble, like a different atmosphere? Like, yeah. That? So for me, it was like, while I was in Naperville, I don't think, I think if you've if ever been in like a classroom where you're like one of a few black kids and then it's time to have the slavery talk and everybody's just looking at you and you're just like, I'm literally <laughs> sitting in the class with you. What are you looking at me for? So like I, I had that going on like when I was in school. Right. But it was a whole nother beast to come to go to the middle of Missouri where there's like, I think the summer prior, Mike Brown had died in St. Louis mm. when I went to school. So to be in like the middle of the whirlwind to see like how things are like actually happen between people. Like, I think people have a misconception that, oh, MLK, Malcolm X, Rosa Park, Bagger Evans happened 40, 50 years ago. It's like my grandmother is only like 10 years older than that. Like that stuff doesn't just get swept under the rug. There's like a whole mountain of things that have happened after that. I don't think people get 
like the South Side of Chicago isn't just that way because people don't work hard. Like those people work really hard. It's just there's a lot of things that need to be fixed that haven't been touched upon just because we have all the civil rights bills. Like <laughs> it's not that simple. Oh man, uh, it ain't that simple, right? So you go to college. What did you major? You went to college. I was a math major. Math Once upon a time, I wanted to be an actuary. Everybody looked at me funny because like, well, what is that? And I'm just like, well, I'd be working with insurance companies or banks, helping them decide like how much risk they need to take on when it comes to setting like premium premiums, deductibles, and loans. Hey man, I don't know how. Well, how did you? Yeah, right. Like, yeah, yeah. You're like, how does that even sound fun? And I was you just like, I want to be a like, firefighter. You're like, I want to be an actuary. <laughs> <laughs> like the way I'm thinking about it, because I was like, I was decent in my accounting classes, and my dad threw it one way, like, hey, check out being an actuary. And as an ignorant 18 year old, you're like, dollar sign, I'll be set. Yeah. Mind you, but when you actually get into like the nitty gritty of like having to learn this comp- these complex math formulas, you're just like, no, <laughs> this is not a proper choice. <laughs> Better decisions should be made. Uh, um, buddy, man. So then, boom, you, uh, did, you, did you graduate college? No. So I actually ended up starting at a program called Europe. Um, wait, wait, wait. So, like, what made you like stop? So, like, you, how, how far along did you get in college? So yeah, I went three years. He was almost there. I would probably have to take a fifth year to be honest with you. But the way it was is like I was while I was doing my major, I was doing work study in the HR office, which was a lot of talking to non-residents about like you know their tax their tax treaties because when it comes to filing taxes and say like you have like an F one visa or J one visa, it's a lot different. And I'm glad I actually got to experience that because this is, when people have these like ill intentions towards immigrants, and it was like no. <laughs> it's kind of tough being an immigrant because there's certain tax codes that you have to follow that my, me as a citizen don't want to have to worry about. So imagine how worrying it is as a citizen when it comes to filing your taxes, like at least double that if you're like coming over here on a visa or something. It, it, it's crazy stuff. And I kind of liked, you know, the idea of like working with others, helping to solve issues that, you know, were very pertinent to them. And I decided to go through Europe's client services track. Shout out to Matthew Klein. Oh, I got, so I, yeah, I want to understand this transition, right? Of like, that got you to Europe, man. Because <laughs> whenever I talk to Europe folks, I'd be like, how did you end up at Europe? So like, yeah, like you was in college, right? So you're in college, you're your third year. And like, what's the, like, what happens in your third year that makes you like, I, I gotta leave here. Like, what? This it was it was the math, math man, the math. The math. I was my roommate at the time was my, my cousin, so he was a good big part in playing me through. And he was not coming back. It was the tense racial relations on the campus because I didn't because it seemed like every year something was going to pop off. I was sick of it all. And I had a friend that had went through the program, and I was just like, you know what? Yeah, they went through Europe, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go check it out because. Uh, being in the middle of Missouri is not cutting it. <laughs> I got to get back home somehow, some way. But I wasn't going to go on home and just like sit on my laurels and be woe well as me. It's like I was going to go back home and figure out what my next step was. Yeah. So you're like, man, this friend I told you about Europe, like, what did he tell you? Like, how, what did he tell you? How did he tell you? Like, what, what was yeah, it? Yeah, he was like, it was a year long program and it would be very rigorous. Like, you would learn how to behave in corporate America because I feel like growing up, as an African American, the way we go about things, it's a little bit more chill, it's a little bit more vibrant, it's a little bit more fun. But when you get into like these corporate spaces, I'm not saying they're not fun people, but it's a little bit more conservative. Some of the interns they send off are to banks. You working in a bank probably know how conservative it gets in suit and tie. <laughs> you can't be like I, I hated it though. That's a, <laughs> I, I ain't there right now. I, I know that's why you, that's why you moved on and got a sex career. So like they were preparing you for like if you rotated into that type of environment, like that was the standard they held. Like, hey, we'll hold everybody to like something that go work on the bank. Everybody else was like, but that's not always the outcome. Sometimes you went somewhere so there's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more chill. Um, so he went through it and then he ended up as an intern on the IT team at LinkedIn, liked it, got to move over to New York for a little bit, came back. They gave him a job here. And I'm just like, OK. Things legit. Might as well try it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's interesting, man. It's funny that you said something that said, like, you know, they 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 train you to like corporate environment. How'd you say it? You said something like it was a little conservative. Like, hey, you're going into this bank, they're not going to like how you talk sometimes. They're yeah. like <laughs> you gotta you gotta got the they want you to bring your authentic self. I don't know. Like, I don't know but, that. 
Uh, how you bring your off? You, you know, that's up for discussion. Right? I ain't gonna, but it's just like that's what be killing me sometimes. It's like <laughs> bring your authentic self. That's what they say. They're like, but we don't like how you talk sometimes. <laughs> you gotta have to change a few things, you know, to package you up into a nice little box to then, you know, do what you want to do. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you like that experience? I mean, so like, I mean, so it was a gift and a curse. It gave me an idea of how things were ever would be. But when you first met me, you probably saw how, like, I probably took it a little too far. Yeah. <laughs> when you first met me, <laughs> it was on a Saturday, and I was in a dress shirt, slacks, and a tie. You're like, what is this man doing? <laughs> so the next time, he was like, the next time that you pull up to me on a Saturday, you better not go dress like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know what it's like. And I, I did not come dressed like that. Like, I had, like... I had to dress your overcoat and the scarf on. I took it off. You're like, oh, no tie today. Oh, you got all gym shoes. It's not too bad. I was like, you know, I was learning. <laughs> That's I crazy. felt like I had to bring my best professional foot forward, you know? <laughs> all right. And so it's like, man, let's talk about that, man. When you think about, you know, and we we to talk about like the rework and the second transition. But when you think about like, re, uh, you know, how you was dressing that rework versus like, I'm like, hey man, don't be coming in here, no dress, shooting tie like this. Ain't like wear a hoodie, please. Like, <laughs> how did that feel? Like, I guess, like, you know, how did you? What was that thought process? Oh, it was a lesson that I wish I had fully integrated, even during like my time with Yo, because I still felt it. I still felt like I had to be this super professional person to sit in. So it was a little bit jarring to go from like. Hey, no, make sure you look really spiffy to like, hey, you can dress down in this environment as long as you're doing what you need to do, you're fine. Right. I think people have this preconceived notion that, like, hey, if you you dress the part, you're gonna act the part. But it's like if dressing the part feels like it's not it's fake, then how well will you perform? And so I was caught in like an identity crisis of like, do I dress the part or do I dress more comfortable? <laughs> and I feel like some people actually like, I don't know what I need to do. Very interesting. Very interesting lesson. Yeah, man. That's a uh, man. I'm, uh, 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 that's the topic, man. I can talk all day about that, dude. So I'm like, man, <laughs> dressing, I don't, you don't, you know, tell people to dress a certain way. Like, let them be authentic in how they want to dress. They can still be professional, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's that part I want to get. So they're like, man. So you in Europe, right? You are you are you in your intern or not in your intern? You yeah. In- so yeah, I think the first time that I came to re- like I. The first time I came to rework, I was like in the six months like classroom period. The second time I went like I like I come met with you was like I was wrapping up my internship and you had approached me about an opportunity like, hey, I have this place that's looking for three candidates. And you reached out to somebody at Europe was like, do you have three people that, you know, might be able to fill these roles? And so I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not converting here at at my internship. I, I would love to go check out the role. Um, simply based on like that first experience I had um, with everybody at rework. And so that was pretty cool. I was like, you like, I'll give you like a crash course in the weekend of what you need to know. <laughs> and then you're going to apply for this role and we're going to try to get you in. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like that. Like we go, we go figure it out, man. So then I'm like, all right. So, get, so like you like, you know, you, you realize that you wasn't going to convert in your internship. And so, like, when you when you heard the program, like, what was your first take on it? Like, what was your first, like, kind of thought? Was it like, all right, well, I ain't going to convert. Like, I got nothing else to lose. Like, what did you, what did you pick so up? So, my deal was, like, okay, so I'm not converting here. What would be the next logical step here? It's like, oh, Rework's there. Okay. What do I, what if I learn now that would transfer really well to WeWork? It's like, oh, I'm a recruiter. Recruiting is like sales, it's like especially for like those external recruiters are, are trying to hit a number so your clients are satisfied, so they're all good. Might be a little different for internal recruiting, but I know that external recruiting is very, very competitive, very results oriented and things like that. I was like, you know what? Let's go check it out. I have nothing to lose. It's, I wouldn't say the com- complete opposite of year up, like, but it's on the weekend. So I can figure out what I need to do during the week. And then on the weekends, I dedicate some time to like reskill or well, not even reskill, like upskill and like get something better. Right. So I was like, yeah, I'm like, and plus, and I had Matthew over there who was always gassing it up. Like, hey, a lot of, they, they like 
what they have with Euro people. They just got to work with them a little bit to get them out that shell. But he, he, it was like it was a good transition. Like you put in all this work ethic over an entire year, you might as well transfer it to something that's going to take advantage of that work ethic, if you know what I mean. So then, boom, you man, you 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 come through, you know, rework. And like, what was the, if you had to say, like, man, two big takeaways that you got from, you know, coming yeah. through your program? What would they be? So I'm going to preface this because my rework experience is probably on the more unique side. Since you <laughs> you grabbed Niles, Mariah, and I, and we're just like, we're going to take like oh, yeah. two, four weeks to like get you up to speed to what you need to know. Um, but it was a, definitely a worthwhile experience. Just the I had the confidence to go after roles that I didn't before, right? Because, like, even in these sales roles, they're like, four-year degree. What do I need a four-year degree for to learn how to sell? <laughs> you don't. What is, the, what is the tool that you need to be an effective seller? You. Okay? So, really, all you need is what Rework teaches is, like, a growth mindset, setting, like, a touch-heavy cadence, and then just sticking to a process, right? If you, if you hit those three things, you stick to your process. You're not trying to change anything every time something goes wrong. If you have that growth mindset of like, hey, it's not working well for me right now, but I really want this and I'm really dedicated to learning it. And then, you know, bringing your authentic self. Because like when you're on the phone, people don't want to hear phony. <laughs> they don't want to hear fake. They don't want to hear the super professional car salesman that just says all the right things to get me to buy. He's <laughs> like, no, they want to talk about like what's going on in their business. How can you fix it? Yeah. <laughs> now, when you think about, man, why, you know, you like, so that's some of the stuff you learned at rework. Yeah. Man, why, why don't they teach that in college? When you think about it, like, man, you like in my bubble in college, you're up like, you know, this, this before rework, like, why don't they teach that stuff? Man? Why did you learn that stuff before then, man? So I didn't learn that stuff because there's money to be made <laughs> off you learn and not learning the stuff until you give us a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. And then I think people have like this this stereotype of what the salesperson is. It's like, oh, this is this person that's going to be hammering my phone eight hours a day who doesn't care about me besides being the customer. So working in sales might be one of those professions where people are to like shy away from because they're like, oh, I, I could never do that because they've never sat in a room with somebody like a Shelton <laughs> who's effectively selling, right? They, they, have, they see the movies, they see like the Wolf of Wall Street and they're like, ooh, I can't do that. <laughs> it's like ooh, he kind of scanned people out of their money and that's the salesperson they think they don't think about like the Sheldons of the world who are like actually making <laughs> positive business impacts man just sell yourself like being human man it's like hey being human and sell yourself and so like man what have you you know like uh it sounds like you took some away it sounds like man the stuff that you learned at rework you still use yeah i feel like it's really helped especially with interviews, the idea of just being able to tell a story to sell yourself, right? Because if you can, t people love stories, right? <laughs> and then also being able, in, with sales, it's not so much like you need to be, I'm not saying you need to deceive people, but you need to paint the picture that this is what they want. This is what they need. And when you're interviewing, you're selling yourself, right? right. You have to paint the picture for them as to like, you know, why would I be a fit here as a salesperson? Why would I be here as a software engineer, right? So I think having like that sales experience as your base, whether you want to take this and run with it, go be a 20-year sales professional, or maybe take this and run with it and do something else. I think it's really critical to see like, this is how you, this is how, this is how we interact on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, facts, big facts. Cool, man. Well, look, man, let's, we, we, uh, we wrap it up. So, man, the, the way we wrap this up, dude, is uh, so we have this uh, this slogan, man, get this work. So this is what it's about. It's like, man, no matter what you do, you're going to have to get some work. And so, man, if you could wrap it up, you know, if you could close this out and just give me like a uh, maybe one, two line or that ends with like, get this work. So, like, if you had to tell somebody something, if you had to tell yourself three years ago, 
you know, are you using in, 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 in college, whatever have you, if you have to tell yourself something and the end it would get this work, what would you tell yourself? If you're working in a job you hate, studying something you don't want to study, or you're just looking to make the change, come get this work. <laughs> like, what else are you doing? Like, we're talking about two months, Saturday, Sunday, two hours. What are we talking about? Come get this work. And if you put in the hard work, it'll change your life. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you, Sheldon. Man, cool beans, man.